Hello and welcome to my shop. Back in September, I went to the Midwest Ohio Valley Pen Turners Gathering up in Belpre, Ohio. And while I was there, I had an opportunity to take a course on turning kitless pens, also known as bespoke pens. Now, I took the class from Jim Hines and Jonathan Vest. They showed me how to make a pen and I had the opportunity to make one as part of the class. They also taught me about the tools that I'm going to need to be able to turn these type of pens. So what I've done is since then, I've been slowly gathering the tools and I finally have them all and I've laid them out on my table saw and I'm going to take a few minutes today and just kind of go over. This is how I'm going to start my bespoke adventure uh, with you guys. I'm going to go over the tools required to turn these style pens. Uh, there will also be a link in the comments below to a PDF uh, that you can download that will list these tools and uh, I'll list what I paid for them and if I can remember where I got them, if I can find the paperwork, I'll list where I purchased them from uh, to try to make it easier for you in case you decide this is a, a direction you want to take your pen turning, uh, you'll be able to more easily gather up all these tools and purchase them. There is one tool that I do not have yet. It is a tenon tool. Now you can turn a tenon with a pair of calipers and a parting tool, but I do know that very shortly uh, there is going to be, it, it's, it's in development right now, there is going to be a custom tenon tool. And when that comes out, I'm gonna purchase one and I'll preview it here on this channel and you guys will see what it is, how it works, and I'll give you all the information on it. I got a chance to use the prototype in the class and there is no comparison. It is phenomenal. With all that being said, let me flip the camera around and go through what we have back here on the table. An essential tool for turning kitless pins is a collet chuck. What this does is it gives you a way to hold your blank to be able to drill it and tap it without damaging your blank. You'll also need a 19 20 millimeter collet uh, that does not come with the kit. I had to purchase this separately. Next up, we need to be able to drill accurate holes into our blanks to be able to tap them for threads. Now, this is a set of drill bits. They're cobalt tipped. I purchased them from Harbor Freight. Uh, the set includes imperial, metric, and alphabetic bits. And while you will not use every one of these bits, it was literally cheaper to buy this set than it was to buy individual bits in the sizes that I needed. I have a set of calipers that I got from a machinist and they are in very nice calipers. However, uh, as my eyes get a little weaker, I have trouble reading them because they don't have the digital readout. So I went to the big box store and I purchased a set of digital calipers. These are very important when turning kitless pins so you can make sure your tenons are turned to the proper diameter. When drilling a hole into your blank, you want to make sure that you start perfectly straight. That's where a set of center drills comes into play. I purchased this set from Grizzly and by putting these in a Jacobs chuck, I'll guarantee that I start straight every time I go to drill a hole into one of my blanks. In order to tap and thread your blanks, I purchased this sliding tap and die holder from Neil's Niche. It's a number two Morse taper. It fits right in your tailstock and since it is free spinning, it will, you don't have to worry about it catching and causing an issue. It comes with two tap holders, two die holders, and a handle. I had to purchase these two parts separate, but they are necessary for using the larger dies and the larger taps. Once you've threaded and tapped your blanks, you need some way to hold them for shaping. That's where these come in. These are custom made mandrels this one is for the cap of the pin, this one is for the body, and this one is for the section which holds the ink nib or the, the quill in the case of a fountain pen. They are M131. I recently got this section mandrel from Jonathan Vest. These came from Jim Hines. This is an M13.75. Uh, Jonathan is making and sending me uh, a M13.75 mandrel for the body of the pen. Next up you'll need some taps and dies. This is an M13-1 plug tap and it's used for the cap of your pen to put threads on the inside of your cap. 
This is an M13 die. It's a triple start die, which puts threads on the body of your pin so that your cap will more quickly and more easily start threading when you put the two together. This is an M4.5 tap. This is specific to the nib that I'll be using, which is the uh, Joe number no. six nib. This tap and die set is used for threading the inside of the pin body and the outside of the section so that you can thread your section into your pin body. It is M10-1. I also purchased uh, M10.75 uh, tap and die so I could use a little finer threads if I want to. The taps and dies on this side of the table are not necessary. I purchased them for experimentation. They are M13.5, M13.75, and M13.1. And what these would be used for is threading the outside of the body and tapping the inside of the cap for different, different size thread patterns on your cap, between your cap and body of your pen. One tool that I neglected to put on the table, but is extremely important for turning kitless pins, is a Jacob's chuck. You'll want to have a good Jacob's chuck, uh, something that fits into your tailstock. This one has a number two Morse taper. This one can be tightened by hand. I don't have to have a key uh, to manually tighten it. And this is used to hold the drill bits so that I can drill into my blanks. I've been a pin turner now for a, quite a number of years. And generally what I'll do is I'll turn a blank and I'll press it into a kit. So I'm really not a pin maker. I'm more of a pin assembler. And I've really been feeling the need to step it up. I want to start making my own pins. Bespoke turning gives me the opportunity to do that. So I made the commitment to learn how to properly turn kitless pins. Uh, I went to the pin gathering and I took the class. I learned how to turn pins. I got a chance to turn one. I also learned about the tools. I think you can see by the number of specialized tools that I have back here on my table saw, this is not a hobby to take lightly. It requires a decent investment. Uh, when you download the PDF, and the link will be in the comments below, I think you'll see uh, that it, it, it's not something you want to get into on a whim because it, it does take a little bit of an investment. However, you are limited now by your creativity. You can make a pen any shape you want. You can use any blank you want. It opens up all kinds of doors and all kinds of opportunities, which to me is extremely exciting. And instead of being a pen assembler, I now feel like I'm going to be a pen maker. And, and that is something that I have needed for a long time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. This is the first in my bespoke uh, playlist. I'm going to next up start working with these tools, start practicing threading and tapping. And as I get a little better, I'll start doing videos and bringing you along, showing you how to make the cap, how to make the section, how to make the body. And eventually we'll be making entire pins. So if you're interested in kitless pins, let me be your guinea pig. I'm going to start using these tools. I'll let you know which ones are diehard necessary, which ones are you know not so important. There may be some other tools that I have to add to my arsenal. Along the way, I'm going to show you how I learn. I'm going to learn on the camera for and with you. And hopefully, if you decide to get into bespoke pins, uh, I'll help make it a lot easier for you to make that jump. I really would like to thank you for joining me in the shop today. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and get ready for some cool looking kitless pins.